know we were putting this thing together. Sometimes you ask yourself, why would you use me, God? I've done this, I've done that, I've done this, I've done that, I've been here, I've been there. Why would you use me? Why would you want to do something through me? That's what you're asking yourself right now. There's a lot of things in your life that you cannot change. I'm five foot eight. I'm never going to be six foot tall. That ain't never going to change. You come from a broken home. It's not going to change. It's where you come from. Maybe you've faced abuse in your life. Maybe you've made mistakes in your life. Guess what? It's not going to change. It's over. It's done with. What you need is a paradigm shift. A paradigm shift is what your reality is in your own mind. What you think things are for real. That's your reality. But a paradigm shift is something that is off in the distance that comes to you abruptly and changes the very thought process of who you really are. So you come from a broken home. So for, maybe you come from a broken marriage. Maybe you've made mistakes. Maybe you've turned your back on God. You can change your perception of who you are. What you've done and where you've come from does not define you. That's not who you are. Those are the mistakes that you've made. Those are the things that you've done in the past. That is not who you are. You are the righteousness of God. You are a creation from Almighty God. You are a human being that God placed on the earth for purpose. You have meaning. You have a life to live that's better than what you're living right now. You have something to look forward to when you walk up out of bed where right now you don't. It's a paradigm shift. There is change coming your way. This event tonight wasn't done because we wanted to get up here and sing and, and have lights. This event tonight was to reach out to you. Those of you who are here tonight are here for a reason. It's because God brought you here so that you can experience a change. Change is painful. Change will cost you. Change is something that a lot of people will never walk down the road of change because the pain is too great. If I want to lose 30 pounds, I cannot continue to eat and do the things that I do. I have to decide I'm going to make a change. I'm going to exercise. I'm going to diet. I'm going to do the things necessary to change my life. I have to take the step. There is a saying, and I'll say it to you tonight. Some of you will never change until the pain of staying the same is greater than the pain it takes to change. I'll say that again. Some of you will never change until the pain of staying the same is greater than the pain it takes for you to change. What do you mean, Scott? Where you are right now. When pain comes your way, it could be a tragedy. It could be a divorce. It could be a, a doctor that gives you bad news and says, if you don't change the way you are, you're going to die. All of a sudden, we decide, wow, this pain that I'm in right now 
It's going to be less than the pain it's going to take for me to change. So I'm going to do it. I saw my loved one die because of the way I lived my life. You know what? I don't want to go down that road anymore. So I'm going to make a change now. Because I've seen tragedy. And it's brought a paradigm shift to me. Someone has given me bad news. And you know what? I don't like that bad news. And that pain is great. I don't like the way that feels. So I'm going to now make my change. That's your paradigm shift. I'm here to tell you tonight. You can do whatever you want to do. But don't leave this place tonight with the feeling that you have inside of you right now. You cannot blame it on your mom and dad because they didn't raise you right. You cannot blame it on the person that hurt you. You cannot blame it on the person that should have been there for you. You cannot blame it on your grandma, your husband, your wife, your friend at work. You cannot blame it on them. Stop having the pity party. And look in the mirror and say, it's me. The Bible says in Romans 14, 13, that we will stand before God. And we will give an account for ourself, what we did while we were here. It doesn't matter what you've done or where you've come from or who's done what for you. You still will give an account for who you are and what you've done. And the excuses that you have and the places that you've been and your past and the people that hurt you and all the other things that's gone along with that won't matter when you stand before God because he will not accept your excuse. He will say, I give you opportunity to make the change. Tonight is your opportunity. Are you going to stay where you are and experience what you're experiencing Are you going to say, Scott, I want something better out of life. I want to wake up in the morning and have purpose. I want to wake up in the morning and say, God, use me. When God said, Scott, I want you to start your own ministry. I said, God, I've always helped other ministries. I've always been there for other people. I've never started my own. I don't know that I can do that. I don't know that I'm capable I don't know that I have what it takes. And God put it in me and he said, I created you. I've called you for such a time as this. I don't care where you've come from. I don't care what you've done. I don't care if you got a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, a theology degree. It doesn't matter. I've called you. I want you to get up and I want you to go. It's time for you to get up and go. Are you a person that looks out the windshield or are you a person that looks out the rear view mirror? I want to look out the windshield when I'm driving because if I'm looking out of the rear view mirror, I'm backing up. That's what rear view mirrors are made for. Windshields are made to look through. Rear view mirrors are made to look back. Which one are you tonight? Are you going to continue to look in the rear view mirror? Are you going to continue to look at your past and let your past define you? You don't have to. God is here because he loves you. He brought us here because we love you. This whole event is because we care about you. And we don't want you to leave this place without knowing the same Jesus Christ that saved me, that called me, that raised me up for such a time as this. He's calling each and every one of you. Each and every one of you, will you make the change? Will you say, Scott, I don't want to experience pain. That's great. I want to make the change now so that I don't have to call on God. When I'm on my last knot on the rope and I've got my two fingers hanging off the edge and I'm like, God, if you get me out of this, I'll never do this again. God, if you just hear my prayer tonight, I promise you, I will serve you. And then you go right back and do it again. Make the change. Make the change. He's calling you. He's wooing you. The presence of God is here for you. He loves you. But he loves you too much for you to stay where you are. He wants you to come. 
We're not here to brainwash you. We're not here to tell you to join a church. We're, we don't, we're not a church. We're a ministry. We're not asking you to do any of those things. We're asking you to reach out to Jesus Christ and know him. And better than that, for him to know you. I know my neighbor down the street. I know he cuts his grass on Wednesday. I know his name. I know his kid goes to my, gar- my, my, my daughter's school. I know him. But if I walked up to him and I said, hey, can I borrow $10,000? He would look at me, probably run me over with his lawnmower. Because he doesn't know me. I know him. I know of him. I know where he lives. I know what he does. I know his kids go to my school. But he doesn't know me. Just because you go to church, just because you say a bed night prayer, that doesn't make you know Jesus Christ. You may know of him, but do you truly know him? And does he know you? When you call out, does he hear your voice? Does he say, hey, that's my child calling. Everybody be quiet. I want to listen to what he has to say because I know him. I've spent time with him this morning. I spent time with him last night. I spent time with him three weeks ago. I know him. He needs me. That's what he's calling you for today. Don't just know of him. Know him and let him know you. Could we all stand in this auditorium, please? I'm going to ask you to do something that's going to be outside your comfort zone. Maybe you don't want to do this, but let me tell you something. It's better to do it now than on your deathbed or when you walk out of here some lonely night on the gutter or in jail or when you're shooting a needle in your arm. You can do it tonight and avoid all of that pain. Because he's here. He loves you. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter if you're hooked on drugs. It doesn't matter if you're uh, going out with girls at night and doing all kinds of crazy stuff every weekend. It doesn't matter. He loves you. He died on a cross. Every lie you told. His hands were nailed to that cross for that lie. Every sin you committed, his stripes on his back. He was beaten. For every one of your sins, for every one of you to have healing in your heart, in your body, in your mind. Every single thing that he went through when he died on the cross was for you because he loves you. I'm going to count from five to zero. And when I get to zero, if you truly want to know the God that I'm talking about, the God that changed my life, the God that changed Brent's life, the God that changed Lucas's life, all of these people that's been on this platform, the God that changed my daughter's life, my wife's life, my son's life. It's so awesome to see my daughter up here singing and my son running the lights at eight years old. Why? Because they want to know God. They want to know him. Do you? Five to zero. When I get to zero, if you want to know him, not come and see us, not come and get brainwashed, but come and make a public announcement that you know what, God? I thought I knew you, but I don't know you like I should. Maybe I've never stepped foot in a door of a church. It doesn't matter how good you are, what you've done, how your community service, all of these things, your goodness will not get you to heaven. The only way to heaven is through the Son of God, Jesus Christ. It's the only way. You cannot go on your good works. You cannot go on your good merits. You cannot go without knowing Him and giving your life to Him. If you're interested count from five to zero. Are you ready? Are you ready to know this God that we know? Counselors, could you come to the front, please? Those of you who are with the ministry and we're going to have some people down here that are going to pray with you. 
pray with you about your problems, pray with you about what you've been through, pray you through is what we call it in the Bible world. If you come down here, we want you to come and be a part of what Jesus Christ is doing. Rachel, could you come? Carrie, could you come? Elena, could you come? Mom, could you come? Aaron, could you come? Debbie, could you come? Luke, your your group, could you come? Just line up here in the front. These are all people whose lives have been changed. Not just me. All these people's lives have been changed. We all love you. We care for you. I feel impressed to say this one last thing. I know I'm dragging on and I apologize. I had lunch with an atheist, a friend of mine, a few months ago. And he was ranting and raving about how there is no God. And when you die, you just lay in the, in the ground and fall asleep. And that's it. And that's all that happens. And I listened to him talk to me for 45 minutes at lunch one day. He's a good friend of mine, but he's an atheist. Doesn't believe there is a God. Doesn't believe that there's a higher power. He believes in nothing. And he told me all of these things and he quoted scripture and he had known all about the Bible and history. And he was more impressive than any minister I've ever sat with. And I've been in the ministry my entire life and I've sat with some great men of God and I listened to him tell me and all of these things. And it was very compelling. And when he was done, he leaned across the table and he said, what do you think about that, Scott? And I said, you know what? That's very compelling to me. And if I didn't know what I know, you could pretty much sway me your way because everything you said is so compelling. But there's one thing that you don't, you, that you left out. And I told him this. I said, if the way I live my life And I die, and it's true what you say, that when I die and I just lay in the ground and nothing happens, the life that I've lived and all of the things that I've done, it hasn't hurt me at all. I have nothing to worry about. I have nothing to lose. Nothing. Because I've lived a good life. I've been good to people. I've, I've given. I've done everything I should have done. And if I die and nothing happens and there is no God, then guess what? No big deal. But if you die and you're wrong, you've lost everything. You've lost it all because you've lived a lie and didn't want to know the truth. Are you willing to take the chance of being wrong? I'm not. And I leaned across the table and I said, what do you think about that? And he looked at me and he got teary eyed. And he said, Scott, I never thought about that. I'm telling you tonight, it's real. He's real. Are you ready? Get to zero. I want you to come. Give your life to Christ. Make the change. Do the paradigm shift tonight. It's up to you. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. If that's you, I want you to come. 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 No judgment. No condemnation. Come. Come to Christ. Come on. Anyone else? Maybe you've made some mistakes. I want you to come. Come on down. That you come. He's calling you. Maybe you just need a change. Maybe you're tired of living where you're living. Come.
I want to do one other thing. While we're up here praying, I want us all to say a prayer together. Because you know, you don't have to come down to experience the love of Jesus Christ. He loves you where you are. So if you'll repeat this prayer after me, the Bible says if you mean it in your heart, that he'll forgive you, he'll hear you, he'll cleanse you from all unrighteousness and give you a new start. We all need a new start. I need a new start every morning. Every morning I get up and I say, God, I need you now more than I did yesterday. I need you now more than I did two days ago. Life is hard. You work a job. You provide for your family. Life is hard. It's hard when you do it on your own. You don't have to. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, dear Jesus. Come on, say it out loud. Dear Jesus. I ask you to come into my heart and forgive me of my sins. I believe you are the Son of God. And I believe that you died on the cross for me. And I believe that you're no longer dead, but that you are alive. Come into my life. Come into my heart. Change me. Make me new. Cover me. Give me hope. In Jesus' name.